My name is Molly Smith and I teach history at Friends School of Baltimore. The lesson I'm going to share with you today is Ed Cafe. I learned about the Ed Cafe lesson from a teacher in Massachusetts, an English teacher named Katrina Kennett. She took elements from the EdCamp model for professional development and adapted them to the classroom in what she calls the Ed Cafe. The basic elements that Ed Cafe draws from EdCamp are participant, in this case student, ownership over the subject areas for discussion, students leading the discussion, multiple sessions going on simultaneously, a couple of different sessions taking place within a class period, and students who are not leading discussions feeling free to choose whichever of the sessions being offered at a particular time slot they want to attend. At the end, instead of a smackdown at EdCamp where teachers share their favorite resources, in this case, the Smackdown after an Ed Cafe is a common document where students share their greatest takeaways from the discussion. I am using these cartoons that I made in Pixton to give you a sense of how I run the Ed Cafe model in my classroom. So here we go. I think it's important to start before launching into an Ed Cafe class to start with a body of common knowledge among the students. In this case, our topic that I'm modeling is the Civil War. And we would start by creating a body of common knowledge. I would not start the way this teacher is starting by indicating I will tell the students everything that they need to know. I'm really not one to stand up in front of a class and lecture. Instead, I would be more likely to do the following. I would lead the students in a discussion where they would contribute their ideas based on previous readings and previous class discussions about the pre-war conditions to build a body of information about key events and turning points that took place during the war. That, I think, is, is an important element to get everybody off with some just very basic common knowledge, common touchstones. And then from there, I would launch into the Ed Cafe. I would send the students off after we've had our common discussion to select an area to research for themselves, a topic of their choice within the Civil War era in preparation for the Ed Cafe. I might suggest some potential topics such as photography or the role of women, um, leading generals, military leaders, political leaders, uh, motives of soldiers, but I also allow students to provide their own ideas, to come up with things that they may be interested in, that they might want to research a little bit further. So I like to give a few ideas for students who really aren't sure of a direction, but also leave it open for students to go in a direction of their own choosing. While I expect them to do some of the research and learning outside of class on their own, I also try to provide one class period for them to work with each other in the room and with me in the room where they can maybe bounce ideas off of each other and learn from one another and I can have uh, some sense of how they're doing with their topics. Preparation is really important. Good research will go a long way towards preparation. In some way though it also is an activity that needs practice. The first time through an Ed Cafe may not be the most successful lesson ever, but given one or two practice sessions and given time to understand the process, it's an incredibly effective way. In this case, um, just teacher checking in with student, student really feels ready, feels empowered to lead that discussion. This particular cartoon or comic strip shows the dynamic of the Ed Cafe during the day. Uh, just to lead you through how that process works. Hey, what is the topic of your session? Photography in the Civil War. I studied public opinion. Can I join too? 
I'd like to start by talking about the importance of images in bringing the reality of the war to the North. I can definitely see the connections between our topics. I think the horrific images from the war might have swayed public opinion against the war. What do you think? By later in the war, people became really tired of the devastation and the photos of the war declined in popularity. You know, we're faced with violent images in the media every day. Do you think we get tired of them or do they still have a big impact? Through this conversation in this particular comic strip, you can see the dynamics. You can see the student introducing her topic, making connections with the other topics, and then finally a student looking to see how what they're studying in the past might relate to today. Now, once this Ed Cafe is finished, the session is finished, then everyone would switch up and go to different sessions. We would rotate through a few different sessions within a class period, depending on the number of students in the class and the amount of time that you have. I generally think 10 to 15 minutes per session is a good starting point. Once we've finished running through the different sessions, then it's time for everyone to contribute to a common document, what their biggest takeaways were. One can do this through a Word document, through Google Docs, through a wiki. It's fine to have students say what they took away out loud, but it's also great to have a class recording of all of those big ideas coming together. It really brings closure. Now, once we finished the SmackDown creating this document, I like to leave a few minutes at the end to talk to the students about the process, to ask them what they think went really well about the lesson, and where they think we still need to work individually and as a class. I find this closure and this debriefing to be really helpful. And then after that, I send students off to reflect on their For own. For me, the final piece really is individual student reflection. I like to have them go off and think about what they learned, not just about the subject matter, but about the way that the class operated, the Ed Cafe model, the student driven, student-run discussion sessions. Ideally, they will do their reflecting in a blog post. I find that to be most effective. In the end, I think that this model of the Ed Cafe is a great representation of 21st century learning, not because of any technology. In fact, it requires very little technology, if any at all. But really because of the student autonomy in selecting what they want to learn about and what they want to present, the student ownership of the discussion, student choice about what sessions to attend, the expectation that students who are attending sessions will contribute in some way. I think all of these things come together to make this a very 21st century type of activity. Um, it has some things in common with Harkness discussions, Socratic circles, or fishbowl discussions, but what is different, I think, is the fact that there are simultaneously several small discussions going on at any given time. My role is to step back and listen at some distance to the conversations going on. I only intervene if something is going horribly wrong, if there's some really serious misinformation, or if students have gotten so far off track and the leader's not bringing them back. But for the most part, I stand back and listen and learn from the students. When I get too close to the discussion, it tends to alter in tone and even shut down as students look to me for the answer. The point of this lesson is they look to one another for the answers. With preparation and with some practice, this is a really terrific way to build knowledge, learning, and leadership skills within a classroom.